Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to continue on FE build number one, and this is going to be part seven. And really, the most one of the most critical and difficult parts of building an FE engine, and that's mounting the manifold. Now, in the last video, you saw that I just kind of laid this up here, and it's still just laying up here. Now, there's a couple of critical dimensions and a little bit of work that goes into putting one of these together, and I'm gonna see if I can get you all up in the air here a little bit so you can see where I'm pointing a little better yeah we're gonna go with that that's close enough I'll pull in a little bit all right so you can see back here and here and here okay all right when you put a manifold on an FE you're dealing with a couple of things the manifold is half of the head now the reason this came to be, NASCAR said they couldn't run an aluminum head in the stock car classes back in the late 50s, early 60s. So the guy that designed these engines, being smart, he put half of the head into the manifold casting side. That made it part of the manifold and that took about 15, 20 pounds off of this engine just in the head weight alone and then made the manifold out of aluminum it took another 85 pounds off, or another 60 pounds off, 70 pounds, somewhere in there. It comes up that it's 85 pounds lighter this way, plus minus a few pounds, depending on the manifold, head, that sort of thing. In doing that, though, it created some oddities. We don't have just our usual intake mating with the head surface, mating with the front of the engine or the china wall, as it's commonly called on four square flat sides. What we've got is compound angles and then for those of you that may not have seen the bottom of one of these before, it's not a flat surface across here. So we got our four plus four. So you're actually dealing with eight surfaces. You're also dealing with a manifold that's made of aluminum it's about at this point 60 years old, 50 years old, depending on how what the exact date is on this one. And they tend to warp a little bit from overheating and just expansion and contraction and general usage. So Ford gave us basically two alignment points. This dowel, which there's a slot in the bottom of the manifold for, and a distributor. Now when I set this back up here, you'll see that the manifold completely traps the distributor. On the good side, it's right here at the front where it's easy to get to when it's in the car. But that can also throw off how everything sits back here. That manifold can, because of that scalloped out design along the intake faces, can actually turn up at one corner or another, buckle in the middle. It, it can move all kinds of directions. So you really have to take your time when you do this. That's why I said I want to dedicate one video to this. I'm not going to talk about anything in this video but this because a lot of the after build or post build, however you want to say it, problems that FEs have always been accused of having or quote plagued with come from improper or unsatisfactory by no fault of the person doing the work. They're following the instructions in the manual or whatever installing of that intake manifold because you can be tight up here and loose down here and it'll suck oil vapor up out of the intake, foul the plug on this cylinder, build up carbon, burn a valve. There's all kind of things that can happen. Now it can happen with any engine when you put the manifold on if it's not sealed properly, but these are a little more finicky. Okay, so when you put the manifold on these engines, you really have to install it twice to do it right. Take a regular old set of intake gaskets. Not your good Prentisil, real silicone Prentisil Felpros, but like this out of the box set here. Go ahead and drop them in place. Now they got their little locking tabs here and here. That's what these are on these motors. We're going to go ahead and lock them in. And that's going to get this gasket pretty well where it needs to be. As you can see, it actually port matches pretty good to these heads. 
because I didn't drastically cut these. Now this gasket gives you a good idea of what you're dealing with. This is the shape of the manifold at the top. Here's the shape of the manifold at the bottom, just right here and right here. So you're dealing with one, two, three, four individual runners going up against that head times two, like I already said. This is another good example of illustrating it. Now we're ready to set the manifold on here. Now we're going to put the manifold on here and then we're going to look through and as you can see these bolts are at a pretty steep angle where most motors have their bolts going down straight into the head or at a slight angle into the head these go in 90 degrees to the head and there's pockets cast in the manifold with little balsas for the bolts to push against now all that needs to be square and if we've milled these heads or had to mill these head faces or that manifold's warped been milled cut whatever in the last 50 years that it's been raced and abused you can very easily get off in your face-to-face -face squareness and that's another thing to keep in mind. Now don't let it scare you. It's just one of those things that after you go through this process one or once or twice, it's a lot less intimidating than it was the first time you went through it. So let me set this manifold up here. So here we go. And you want to come down as square as you can. Watch your fingers. and we're in place. And I don't know if you could hear that little kathunk sound. Now, here's your distributor opening. The distributor is really your main alignment for this manifold. Now, the other thing you're gonna to wanna to do, and this one's actually looking pretty decent on that side, and you can push this manifold. I don't know if you can see it moving in that video. You can push this manifold and it'll slide like a boat on a trailer. It'll just kind of rock in here. Get the manifold lined up. I've got my bolts and my washers in. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to pull these super tight. Now I've wiggled this manifold around until all these bolts will go in. And I've checked my china wall clearances. The front is a little tighter than the back. I'm pretty level here. But what I can do is once I get these bolts in place and run down so that I've got plenty of thread into my aluminum, what I'm going to do is wiggle this manifold a bit. And I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it does say it can move. Now you don't want to move it like that when you're permanently mounting it because you'll beat up the apprentice seal on your gaskets. This side is up quite a bit. So what I gotta do is try to find a happy medium. And if we can't find a happy medium, we're gonna have to do some cutting. And we're trying to avoid cutting if possible. All right, so let's see. And just like everything else you do, you want to crisscross. And I'm not pulling this super tight. I'm just getting a good say 20, 25 pound pull on it because I want to see if I pop up anywhere. And what I'm hoping is that this manifold ends up square, flat, and in worst case scenario, slightly higher than the head. Because then that means we got meat to take off of the bottom to get the top down. All right, so we're gonna go with this old school set here because these are really, really long. That's nice. Wow, I don't know if they still make stuff like this, but that's nice. And what we're going to try to do is go in around the gasket, and I'm in at the front. So that tells us we got a leak. Now remember, this thing's not super tight. Now I'm going to take my flashlight.
Bow. Okay. Come here. Right, you have a ball. You got a ball. That's on now. You have a ball. You can squeeze it down. Right here, you have a ball, right? Watch. You can't see it because it goes fast. Let me get back in here. See, I'm going right in there. Right. Now stop. Now watch. That's leaking water and air. Here's your back and leak. But the intake is sealed to the heads. At least on this side. So maybe you're okay. Okay. So we definitely need to work on this intake. So what I got to do now is determine <coughs> by how much. So six thousandths pretty well readily went in everywhere. Almost perfect, almost perfect warp, warp. Yeah. Okay, now I need to check here. Let's break everything back loose. got is a classic FE warp but we don't have a lot of it I am a little worried about these valve cover rails leaking but we've only got two manifold options available to us for this build this is being kind of a budget-minded build but a good build we haven't cut any corners but we are using what's in already in the hands of the client. Parts wise, you know, main architecture, block, manifold, crank, that sort of thing. So, what I'm going to do, and this may or may not work, sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. These are my two low centers, these are my two high centers. I'm going to start and go that way, and then I'm going to go this way. Now that breaks the crisscross pattern a little bit, but what we may be able to do is tighten this manifold up, let it sit for a week, and it might bow it back the other way. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one down, but not tight. And I'm gonna pull this one down. And maybe what will happen is it will split the difference between the four corners. We're going to lead the middle up for right this minute. And I'm just going to snug these. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there cringing, but I've seen this work. And then i got to take the feeler gauge and feel around again. Now I gotta tighten up middle. It's basically what we're doing here is a uh, improper way to mount a manifold the proper way. Now this is a factory Ford manifold. I think I've already said that. And this one has been damaged and worked on and it's been ported and had stuff done to it. I'm going to pull these down until they feel about right. And this is why I say to properly install this thing on a fresh build, you install it twice. Which seems silly, but it's just one of those things that goes along with running these. This is the best way to do it. And I'm really curious how the other one's going to turn out with the twin four barrel 
bare block motors manifold on it because that's going to be if we get the budget that's going to be a brand new block brand new heads brand new manifold from two different manufacturers and if not it's going to be an old old block that's on its last legs kind of brand new heads brand new manifold where this is an old block that's been machined and checked with a brand new set of heads and a decent manifold although this manifold has had a lot done to it over the years now we repeat the process once again now this is one of those places where if you've got access to it one of those snake lights that you can slide in from the other side or down the manifold and shine lights and that kind of thing will show up little gaps and cracks now I'm down to a 6,000th feeler gauge and I can't get inside the runners but what I'm going to do now is see if I can get under the ports in here in the middle now I'm going to switch back to the GoPro situated good here we may lose battery before we get done and as you can see, I'm using a six thousandths. I got that upside down. It's a six thousandths feeler. And I'm trying to snake it up under by hook or crook, whatever I got to do. And see, you can see here how the gaskets rose up or risen up as the manifold's been tightened. And I want to push this between the head and the manifold, I mean the gasket and the head and the gasket and the manifold everywhere that I can, because this is how we're checking for leaks. This is our preliminary, do I have a problem finder. And then I'm gonna go do the same thing on the other side. And you wanna snake up under as much stuff as you can. Now, Right here, I can't get in on the manifold side, but I can get in on the head side. But I can only go so far. Doing the same thing, just giving it a good little poke as you go to kind of try to get it in there. And I got nothing. No, it's recording. It, it does that to save battery. Okay. Okay. And as you can see, the gasket's setting at different levels along the manifold. And that's the change in shape of the manifold, not so much the gasket. Now, this also shows that the gasket's a little deeper back here at the back than it is at the front. And our measurement up here shows that because up here, we're at like 164 and back here we're at a wide tolerance of like 178 and here's where your cork's going to be or your rtv whatever the case may be i'm pretty satisfied that we're going to be able to use this manifold at this point without having any drivability issues we just got to use a better quality gasket so i'll use the fell pro with the real blue print seal around it and it should take care of the situation